where are you guys gonna sit back there? We can sit back there. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, let's move. Let's move up a little bit. No. Oh, sit in the middle. No. No. From here further. From here forward. From here forward. But I spit, yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to do Bible study. I'm Jeremy. So it's nice to meet you guys. All right. Let's pray real quick, and then let's get to it. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your blessings, another day. We don't deserve your grace, your mercy. We don't deserve your goodness. Father, help us draw near to you. Help us understand who you are and what you want from us, Father. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for these uh, young adults. And as they can, as we uh, learn about your word and you'll provide them with the foundation of wisdom that they will apply in the future. Bless this time and this fellowship and this study. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's turn to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. You don't, if you don't know where it's at, I'm sure you have a friend that can point you to where that's at. Mm-hmm. Okay, everyone there? Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Who would like to read verses 1 through 7? Sure. Go ahead. Now the serpent was the shrewdest of all the creatures the Lord God had made. Really? He asked the woman. Did God really say you must not eat any of the fruit in the garden? Of course we may eat it, the woman told him. It's only the fruit from the tree. Of, at the center of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God says you must not eat it or even touch it or he will die. You won't die, the servant is. God knows your eyes will be open when you eat it. You become just like God, knowing everything for good and evil. The woman was convinced. The fruit looked so fresh and delicious, and it would make her so wise. So she ate some of the fruit. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her. And he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were open, and they suddenly felt shame and at their nakedness. So they strung big leaves together around their hips to cover themselves. It says hips in yours? Yeah. Oh, interesting. So, how many of you guys heard this story before? How many of you heard it to this extent? It was like a little. That's a, What kind of translation is that? I believe it's. Um, a new oh. Ooh. So, I guess my first question, I'm sorry. Anyone have anything? No. My first question would be, who is the serpent? Yes. Lucifer, Satan. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Anyone else? Any other names of the serpent? No, to shoulder rubs. I'm sorry. There's, there is, yeah. So I have uh, image of Satan, devil, false accuser, slanderer, the dragon, deceiver of the world, prince of demons, uh, or people, or these demons depend on the devil in thought and action, governed by the devil. So, have you ever been falsely accused by someone? Yes, I Right? Would that, would that kind of move into that direction? But not this person, but maybe kind of inspired by uh, the devil, in other words? Falsely accused? 
right? So how do we not allow Satan to govern our lives? Is it a literal wall? Well, it's a wall in your heart. The wall of the heart. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? No? What does crafty mean? What does it mean to be a crafty person? Sly. Sly? Underhanded sometimes. Underhanded? Can you... Right. Uh, can you give me? Um, can you elaborate more on like, that? Crafty would be if um, instead of like rushing it on, you kind of like make a plan, like sneaky kind. Yeah. S- sneaky. Yeah. Anyone else? No. Okay. So it could be what you guys said: it's subtle, shrewd, clever, sly, cautious, careful. So I said that the serpent was crafty. He was sly or clever. Although we may get away with it in the moment or in secret, the truth will eventually be made known. How's that, how's that make you feel or what do you think about when you hear that? Like something that you do completely in private, whether it's with our thoughts, whether it's just in secret, no one sees, oh, no one sees me. The Bible says all things will be brought to light. What do you what do you guys think about that? It's true. It's true. Can you give me an example or a story on why that's true? Well, from personal experience. Okay. Shit. <laughs> okay. So you were being shrewd, you were being cautious. They had, well, if, if it's too explicit, well, how kind of how they, uh, how did they find out? And you don't have to tell us the details. I told them. You told them. Yeah. Why did you tell them? Because my grade was horrible, and I was really far behind, and I was hurried. Uh huh. Similar story. Similar story. Similar are you a part of that story? I'm taking Philip's classes. Uh-huh. And um, I'm not doing very well in politics, as you know, many people in this room know. <laughs> anyway. Um, and I was like, I'm not going to do this for you. Like, I'm not going to do this for you. 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 i they kind of find out just a little bit. So, it's all Anyone else? No? All right. So, should you, I don't know if I should. I, I got caught for things that I thought I could hide. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but. <laughs> no, I want to know. No. <laughs> I don't think it's appropriate. So, but. I've known in my own experience that whatever I try to hide always gets revealed. Whether it's a day or a week or a few hours or minutes or, or five years from now, it eventually comes out. So. <laughs> it's going to be found out no matter what, Sue, so if you guys want to tell us what you guys are talking about. We're not talking about anything. You're not talking about, oh. <laughs> All right. Why are we the only people on this side? Why are you because the only people on this side? Because everyone else is on this side. You guys are special. Friends, stop want, being lonely. Because you want the ship to be teetering this way. Yes. And not to the full boat. So that everyone on that side can be So that everyone on that side can drunk first. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Why did God make the serpent knowing he was going to rebel? He likes freedom. I don't know. Who likes yes. freedom? God. Can you go in a little further on that? 
Nope, that's mm. the that's deep. <laughs> <laughs> because like that's why he made us. So he made Lucifer that way, so that because he didn't want us to uh, like he wanted us to be able to make our own choices instead of actually. Cause he, I don't know you're you're on the right track. You're going there. Are you, are you done? Yeah. You sure you don't want to continue? Used to teach what? Our youth group. Oh, okay. Yeah. He, he was in the military, so that was fun. That was, was it really fun? Or yes, you... yes. Yeah. Anyway. So, about. We call it, for example, about like awesome and stuff. In the military, we don't slouch. We stand up straight, but we don't look at anybody in the eye and we look like Okay. Anyway, that's not the point of this. So, <laughs> completely off subject, but we'll, we'll get back to that. So back to who made the serpent. God made the serpent, but the serpent rebelled against him in heaven, um, and he was thrown out because he desired to be God. So basically, the heart of every false religion tempts people to say that they can become God. What do you think about that? Like, you can be God. That's what? <laughs> Why is that a no-no? Because you can't do that. Why? It's, it's you know what? impossible to, you know, like, to okay. make things out of nothing. Okay. Breath. But I'm not sure that that's what you mean. Anyway. And that you don't have to gain any other power over the weather and the complete nature. But it seems like science is being able to do that. What would you say? How do you have to clean <laughs> <laughs> I have complete control over what's happening in the weather. It's called the dictatorship, but okay. Maybe manipulating the weather, I don't know. Someone Actually, would justify that. Win though, by but... blowing, so... That's not wind. Yes, that, yes, that's, yes. Right. that's bad breath. Can you fly a kite? Okay. Yes, yes, I can. Yeah, you can get a leaf blower. It's blowing there. <laughs> that's wind. But that's, that's not okay. you. That's the... <laughs> yeah, okay. So... Back to well, back to you. What were you going to say? <laughs> okay, back to. No more no no more detail detours. Okay, so. You don't have to like physically worship the devil to be you know evil. <laughs> okay, all right, so wait, 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 wait. you got. I swear I'm going with you. Okay. okay. Um, so, I was about how if you say you're your own God and you think you're your own God, then you're on the side of the devil anyway because you're rebelling against God and anything that's rebellious against God is on the side of the devil. So, would you say um, not doing what God wants? us to do like we were created for a specific purpose right but we have a choice whether we are going to obey that purpose or whether we want to go do our own thing is that kind of like i'm being my own god like i hear you but i'd rather do something else i think along that can go along the lines of you become your own title we can idolize ourselves i agree ouch. yeah ouch yeah so all creation was originally designed to serve God, to use Him uh, to... He created us to bring glory to Himself. Glory of His... of a, Like, basically, like, witness. Like, He is God, there is no other God, and um, He's good, and He's eternal, and He's loving, you know. And He wants us... And Satan wants us not to believe that. He wants us to be... Miserable. Mm, yeah. So, what did God really say to Adam about the fruit? Don't eat it. Don't touch it. It's a trap. Don't touch it? That's it. That's, this, is, this is finally. Don't touch it? Did he really say that? Don't touch it like, don't touch it. 
you guys want to do you want to look that up? Did God really say to Adam, don't touch it? You're right on 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 a on a point, though. Someone someone did say that. Did God say to Adam, don't touch it? No. I'm looking it up. He said it to Eve. He said to all. Look it up. Who who did what did God directly tell Adam? I think it's probably in the chapter before, like chapter two, Genesis. You may freely eat of any fruit in the garden except the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you eat this fruit, you will surely die. Did he say touch it? No. Oh, it says, of every tree of the garden, you may have seen Hold on, there's more. Okay. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt show me that. True. But did he say not to touch it? No. Yes. No. No. He did not. Did he? Okay, so God did not directly speak to Eve in the con- in the in the context that we have, mm-hmm. right? So, what did Eve say? We shall not touch it or eat of it. We shall not. Okay, let's look at it. Uh, he said what? Sorry. What did Eve say? God said, do not touch it. Did, did God say, she said that, but did God say that? God did not say that. So what would that be to add to God's words? What would she be to add to what God said when he did not say that? Right. Well, But he never said that we to, yeah, he never said that we couldn't touch it. He just said we couldn't eat of it. Now I'm not gonna shift I'm not trying to shift the blame to women. I'm trying to show you guys a little more. So why um so she added the commandment, a, a commandment that God never originally said, right? Why didn't the serpent tempt Adam? Why did he tempt Eve instead? Because Adam was there. Because God spoke directly to Adam. God spoke directly to Adam. And then Adam told Eve not to eat So we see like we see kind of a picture here where we're like, well, who was supposed to relay the information to Eve? Did Eve come up with that? Did Adam miss relay the information that he heard from God? Like telephone? <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you guys think that she just kind of added it to him to uh, her on her own, or do you think Adam like gave her the wrong information? Adam told himself, if I don't touch it, then I'm gonna eat of it. And so uh-huh. he told Eve not touch it so that she won't not eat it. So you think that Adam it's told her? It's a theory. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. I have a, another theory too on top of that theory I've thought about too she was more vulnerable than him and perhaps Adam was in the presence of God and Eve was lured away from God's presence that's a theory it's not saying it's true so we see like the, the, the author he gives us enough but he doesn't give us every little detail right So my question to you guys next would be, how did the serpent perceive the fruit? What was the perception of the fruit to the serpent? What did the serpent think about the fruit? Um, like, what did he want them to think, or what did he think? What did he think? Oh, I feel like he thought it would kill you. About the fruit. <laughs> I feel like he didn't think that... Um, I could be wrong, but I feel like he knew that that was 
the thing that would lead them away. Uh -huh. So, you know, like a key for them to, uh -huh. like, uh, join him or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, actually, a gateway to them, you know, just being led away from Christ. Mm -hmm. Like, he knew what it was. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe, uh, he saw it as, or he made it so that he saw it as a treasure that God didn't want them to have. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do, do we know what Satan's desire was? What was Satan's desire? Well, what's Satan's personal desire? But, okay, you guys are all right. But what did Satan want to be? He wanted to be God, right? And so do you think that he saw that fruit as a way to do that? And that was, that's, that's how he... That's how he, that's how he uh, was led away by, from, from God because he, he saw the fruit as being, well, this, if I, you know, this is, this is what I want, right? I want to be God, so if I take of it, maybe I might be God. What did Eve see? What did she desire? Because it never said, the Bible never said that she wanted to be God. She wanted knowledge. She wanted no knowledge or... Uh huh. She wanted to be wise, and she also saw that the fruit was delicious, was good, right? So Satan over here, his perspective of the fruit was, he wants to be God, right? And then Eve's perspective is, uh, she wanted, she wanted wisdom, right? Now, what was, what do you think Adam, it doesn't talk about it, but what do you think Adam's desire was about the fruit? <clears throat> to be like Eve? That's a, yeah. Why would he, why would he follow Eve if he knew what God's command was? What do you think Adam, right, what? Right, what do you think Adam's desire was? Huh? Maybe, maybe. I, I personally think his desire, because if we look at the punishment of Adam, I think his, and, and the punishment was, well, Eve's punishment, right? Eve's desire, Eve's desire may, may be the desire to rule over her husband. But Adam was, she was kind of punished to say that the, God says, you, uh, but your husband will rule over you. Because Adam did not exercise his authority. Right? You, what do you guys think about that? Could be, yeah. I think his desire was his wife. He desired to please his wife more than he desired to please God. Because you ever hung out with someone that's like, you really like them, and so you want to be accepted by them, so you kind of like, even if they tell you to do something that you're not supposed to do, you're like, I'll do that because you're doing it. And I want to be accepted by you. I, can, I kind of think that's what was going on. But it's in theory. What do you think? It's a theory. So my question would be, what did the fruit actually do? Did it, it did open their eyes, so Satan did kind of tell them some partial truth, right? But their desire, one, Satan's desire was to be God. Eve's desire was to be wise. I assume Adam's desire was, was to have his wife, or I don't know, he already did, but um, what actually came true about the fruit? Who's in, whose interpretation of the fruit was actually right? God. 
So we kind of live in a world where um, people are confused about what truth is, right? Like when, if I were to say that this right here is a bag of chips, right? In the world, we live in a, uh, rel- it's like universalism or relativism where the, well, basically everything is what you want it to be. It's not what it really is. You've heard of that. You kind of follow, follow me here. Like you believe what you believe and I'll believe what I believe. We agree to disagree. Okay. So is this a bag of chips or is it not a bag of chips? It's not a bag of chips. It's not a bag of chips. Sure. So what if I said this was a book? What if I said this was a book? Well, there are words on it. That doesn't make a book. What if I said it was a crocodile? Do you kind of see where I'm? Do you kind of see what? Do you kind of see the picture I'm painting here for a second? Yes. Like, you know, when we look at the doctrines of other religions, they say every religion is the same religion. It's whatever you want it to be, right? I've never heard that. You've never heard that. You've never heard that, Ben? I've never heard that. Oh, what you have? Mm-hmm. Let me let me draw a more clear picture, okay? Let me draw a more clear picture. Here's the picture that I'm going to draw, okay? If everything is relative and it is whatever you want it to be, right? Morality is just self-decided. Then that means I can go into a bank and just take money out of it because that's what I believe. Is that right or is that wrong? Wrong. It's wrong. We were talking about that in the Sunday school. Oh. We were talking about if we all set our own world, how does the world would just be chaos? But that's the world we live in, isn't it? Yeah, yeah see, that's, that's exactly what we said. We live in a world where, why do we feel shame? Why do we feel angry? Or why do we feel happy, you know, when, when we do good things or when people do mean things to us? It's because God put his laws inside of our hearts already. Right? So we all know right and wrong already. But the question is, are we going to listen to our own conscience? No. No? Why? As humans, we are stubborn uh-huh. and are made naturally rebellious. And naturally rebellious. I agree. Because I can... Where's the other one at? Yeah. So what actually happened was when they, what God's interpretation, he had the true interpretation of what knowledge is, right? If you eat of this, you will die, right? So his intention wasn't whatever she wanted it to be, whatever Satan wanted to be, whatever Adam or the truth was, if you do this, you will die, right? So he was telling the truth, right? What did Adam and Eve feel after eating the fruit? Shame. Shame. Why did they need the hide? Because they were bad kids. They were bad kids, yeah. Oh my goodness. They didn't want God to find them. Uh huh. So, yeah. Um, have you ever felt bad when you did something? that you shouldn't have done, right? That's our conscious screaming out like, that's wrong, what are you doing, right? That's God inside of every human being saying, don't do that, no, stop, right? And they they lived and they walked in the shame and, and then they try to cover themselves up, right? And it didn't work. 
like nothing they did, like, oh, maybe if I get a bunch of money, or maybe if I'm beautiful enough, or maybe if I have a bunch of friends, this will cover up what I did. And God sees, he's like, I see you. I know what you did. And until you repent, right? Because the only thing that can atone for sin is blood. Yes. So, Personally, when that happens to me, it's because God, the healing doesn't come right away because he really wants me to understand what I did and how that happened and how I could avoid that next time. Does that make sense? So we're already forgiven, but he's like, I'm, I'm going to allow that to, you to stay there so you can really think about what you did or what you said and how you could change that next time that happens. And so God loved us so much, he sent his only son. Otherwise, we'd be continuing to sacrifice animals, innocent animals. And so Jesus, being the innocent lamb of God, offered himself. And so now we can be restored to God. We don't have to experience shame or guilt because of what Jesus did. So that basically concludes what we have here. So nothing we can do on our own can cover up what we did. Only the blood of Jesus. Not fame. People try to cover up their shame. Like if I become famous, if I become this, if I do this, then, then I will be, my sins will be forgiven. If I do enough good deeds, and, and God's like, nope. Until you repent of your sin and put your trust in Jesus, I from heaven will not cleanse you. So on the outside, people look like they have everything together, but in the inside, God sees all the sins from the moment we were born, even to the day we die. And he doesn't want us to carry that burden. And he doesn't want us to live in shame or guilt. So he died on a cross for us. God himself made himself into a man, lived a perfect life, died on a cross for us. And he says, believe in me and repent. And, and our sins are forgiven. You get that healing and you get that freedom. And you can be what God designed you to be. What do you guys think? Yes. Oh, yeah.